Hey there, friend. In this video, we are diving into type 2 diabetes. We will go through step by step through that pathophysiology so you can really fully understand what is happening here. And then you'll be ready to really critically think on it on your nursing school exams, which of course is what nursing school is all about. So then we're going to take it one step further. We're going to go through the signs and symptoms that you have to know so you could, again, critically think about it, as well as then the nursing assessment and the nursing interventions that you will be doing as a nurse and that you absolutely will be tested on. So this is one disorder that you're going to hear a ton, ton, ton about in nursing school. So we're going to break it down super simple for you into super simple steps so you can critically think about it for your nursing school exams so you can ace them. Let's do it. Hello, hello, my friend. Welcome back. My name is Christina Raffano, and I am the creator of the Nursing School Show here, where, of course, we walk you through how to pass nursing school step by step. So hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell, and let's dive in. Now, diabetes type 2 happens when the blood sugar level in the body is high, and then the cells stop responding to insulin, which is also known as insulin resistance. Now, this can also lead to the pancreas itself then decreasing its insulin production. Now, what happens when the pancreas decreases the insulin production? Overall, there will be a high blood glucose level, too much sugar in the blood, but the cells won't be able to use that glucose for energy because the cells aren't responding to insulin. So in diabetes type two, the pancreas is still making insulin to move glucose into the cells, but the body cells are saying, mm, no thanks, I don't want any more glucose. <laughs> so insulin is kind of like a door-to-door -door sales guy who works for the big boss pancreas. He keeps going around to body cells, to body cells, to body cells, knocking on their door, asking if they want to buy his glucose. But nobody wants to buy it, which is not good, right? Because what is going to happen? Well, the body cells aren't getting glucose to use for energy. And then the glucose is just building up and building up and building up in the blood. And then over time, that big boss pancreas stops sending that door-to-door -door sales guy insulin because he keeps getting rejected by the body cells. So I mean, who wants to keep putting themselves out there <laughs> only to be rejected all the time, right? So the pancreas just stops making insulin. So really this problem is twofold. You have insulin resistance resistance because the cells, they don't want any more glucose. And then you have that decreased insulin production. So that's the pathophysiology of diabetes type 2. Now, although we don't know exactly what causes it, we do know that chronically high glucose levels are a major factor, either from obesity or a lack of activity, which often go hand in hand. Now, a genetic link has also been found, so meaning that if the patient's parents have diabetes, then their children are more likely to as well. Now, I know that pathophysiology is a lot to learn in nursing school, but do not worry. I have a free cheat sheet for you that walks you through some amazing study tips to really help you learn things faster in nursing school. It's called the Nursing School Study Checklist, and I'm going to put the link down below in the description for you to get that. You are going to love it. Now, we've talked about what type 2 diabetes diabetes is and then what is happening inside the body. Now let's break down what some of the symptoms might be and then why they are happening. Now that way you won't be memorizing a list of signs and symptoms for your nursing school exams. No, that is not what we do here at all. But instead you will be able to critically think through the signs and symptoms and then relate them back to the pathophysiology of diabetes type 2. Now, when you think of diabetes, I want you to think of the three P's. Okay, you ready? Polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia. So let's go through what each of these uh, three P's means and then break them down because these are huge for you to know. So poly, the first part of the word, means a lot or many. Urea refers to urine, and then dipsia refers to being thirsty, and phagia refers to 
eating. So putting all those together, polyuria means excessive urination, like the patient is really urinating frequently and a lot. And then polydipsia means excessive thirst. Now, I mean <laughs> excessive, that the patient is really thirsty, just all of the time. And then polyphagia means excessive hunger, so the patient is hungry all of the time. Now in patients with diabetes, now there is an increase in the amount of sugar in the blood. So the blood is just filled with this sugar because of that insulin resistance. Like we said, remember from that pathophysiology back in the beginning of the video, right? So these three symptoms really make sense when you think about it. I mean, what are the kidneys going to do when the blood is filled with sugar. Well, they're going to try to get rid of it, right? So they're going to urinate a lot. And that is what leads to that polyuria. Now, the patient will also be extremely thirsty because their body is telling their brain, um, hello, I'm drowning in sugar, so please help me out. So their brain will then tell them to drink more fluids to then help dilute out that sugar. And that's what's causing this polydipsia. Now they'll also be really, really hungry because their body cells are deprived arrived of their best energy source, which is glucose. So even though there is glucose in the blood with diabetes, the cells cannot use it for energy, right? They're rejecting that insulin to inject it into the cell. So they need more energy. So then their brain keeps telling them to eat and eat and eat, and that's what causes that polyphagia. Now, if you're a Nursing SOS member, be sure to log into your dashboard and download the study guide that we have for you for diabetes type two. We also have one for you for type one, diabetes insipidus, and all the other endocrine disorders that you have to know for nursing school. It will be a really good guide for you to help you remember all of these things as you study. And if you're not a nursing SOS member yet, be sure to join the waitlist so that you can join the next time enrollment opens. So I'm going to put the link down below in the description for you to check out all the details. You are going to love it. So now that we've gone through the top three symptoms that your nursing school exams are going to test you on with diabetes type 2, right? So there's three, polyuria, polydipsia, and polyphagia. So now let's talk about what you will be teaching your patients as a nurse um, with diabetes to help them manage their diabetes care for the best possible outcome. So patient education is a huge part of what we do as nurses, right? Especially when it comes to diabetes because it takes a lot of patient education so that they can really manage it properly at home and stay healthy. So patients with diabetes will often have a dietitian prescribe them their diet plan and then educating them on the uh, importance of eating carbohydrates from vegetables and fruits and whole grains. That's going to be important. Um, these types of carbs, they don't raise the blood glucose glucose level after they eat. And they should also consume about 20% of their daily calories from protein as long as they have healthy kidneys. And they should increase their fiber intake as well. So you'll need to teach, uh, teach your patient to limit saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, and excess sugar or alcohol. And then these dietary modifications are not easy for a lot of people, right? I mean, Come on, how many times have you tried to eat better and healthier and then beeline straight for the uh, tub of ice cream after a stressful exam? I know I have. So we need uh, to be patient and compassionate, right, with our patients. And then, of course, encourage them to take it just one step at a time. We are all human. Take it one step at a time, one day at a time. And remind them that one day in cheating in their diet plan doesn't mean that they can't do it. It just means that they will need to try again the next day. You'll also want to encourage your patients to exercise based on their doctor's recommendations for them. So for the most part, it's okay for most patients to perform moderate intensity exercise for at least 150 minutes per week. Now that's two and a half hours per week, which works out to be about a 
half hour of exercise five days a week. So then before the patient's exercises, they should test their blood glucose levels and their urine ketones. Now, if ketones are present in their urine, that means that they don't have enough insulin in their body to then effectively use that glucose. So their body is breaking down fats instead, which leads to those ketones in the urine. Now, if their cells can't use glucose, then exercise will just make the problem worse because when you exercise, your liver sends your blood lots of glucose to use as energy. And because their cells can't use it for energy, their blood glucose levels will rise even higher. So if they have urine ketones, they should not exercise. They also need to check their blood glucose levels before, during, and after they work out to determine how, uh, determine then how much carbohydrate that they will need to safely exercise. They should aim to keep their blood glucose level in above 100 milligrams per deciliter before exercise. Now this will help prevent hypoglycemia while they are working out because then their body will be using a lot of sugar as energy during that exercise, during that workout. And the patient will also need to eat between 15 and 30 grams of carbs for every half hour to an hour of exercise to keep their blood sugars up. Now you'll also need to do a lot of uh, education around their medication management if they're taking medications or insulin. Now this is going to depend on what medications they are taking, so make sure that you know what their doctor has ordered for them. Then you'll also need to teach your patient about proper foot care. Patients with diabetes have um, peripheral neuropathy sometimes and then poor circulation, which can often lead to foot ulcers. So teach them to inspect their feet every day, keep their toenails trimmed, and to always wear good fitting shoes. So they should never go uh, barefooted around anywhere. Okay, so those are the main teaching points that you will need to cover with your patients. They're also the main ones that are going to show up on your nursing school exams. So make sure that you know those, okay? Now, now, there are three ways that I can help you more through nursing school. Number one, be sure to download this nursing school study checklist that we have for you that walks you through how to study in nursing school step by step. You are going to love it. Be sure to download that right after watching this video. And be sure to check out our nursing school boxes that we have for you. They are packed with resources to help you pass your exams and learn things faster that you can, so you can actually have a life in nursing school. Yes, it is possible. And of course, if you want me to hold your hand through your nursing school journey, and uh, you know that that is exactly what I'm here to do, then do not miss out on joining the Nursing SOS membership community the next time enrollment is open. So I'll put the link to all those things down below in the description for you to check them out. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment below, of course, to let me know that you loved it and share this video with a friend who also needs help with endocrine or med surge in nursing school or diabetes in nursing school. And of course, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you never miss a video and click on one of these videos right over here so you can keep rocking nursing school and as always my friend go become the nurse that god created only you to be and i'll see you next time on the nursing school show take care bye bye